Hello everyone. Let us try to understand the process of equalization. And we will see that how the equalizers will be used in a baseband transmission system to cancel out the effects of intersymbol interference. Let us look at the system model first. This, this, uh, this particular, these, uh, these are the input bits which will be uh, going, which will be going into the system after modulating onto a pulse. Let's say we choose GT as the pulse. So that means these bits will be modulated onto uh, GT pulse. The choice of the GT pulse will be in the hands of the designer. And we will, we have, we know that if we use the raised cosine pulses, then we, we shall be able to achieve the, uh, fulfill the Nyquist criteria for zero ISI. And these modulated pulses will be passed through the channel. The channel impulse response is given by CT. After going through the channel, the noise will be added into the signal. So that T is, let's say, the noise added into the uh, signal that is uh, passed through the channel. At the receiver, the signals will be received through a receiver filter. In the receiver filter can be a match filter, which is an optimum filter because it maximizes the signal to noise ratio. We all know that. After the signal passes through the match filter, which is basically a receiver filter, the signal will be sampled and after every capital T seconds, then the signal will be detected and the decision will be made in favor of uh, whether a 1 was transmitted or a 0 was transmitted in the case of a PAM system to uh, in the case of a binary PAM system or if it is some other modulated uh, uh, some other modulation criteria you is used here then accordingly the decision will be made now ht what is ht ht is the combined response of the uh, pulse and the channel impulse response. XT is the combined response of HT and MT. That means GT. XT is basically the transmit pulse, which is GT, the convolution of the channel impulse response, which is CT, and the con uh, along with the convolution of the receiver filter response, which is MT. So that means XT is basically GT convolved with CT convolved with MT. Right. So that means at this point before the sampler, YT signal will be received, which is basically the input pulses and the delayed, we can say that it is the delayed version of the XT pulse, pulses received here, right? XT minus NT, it's actually a bit stream of pulses. So bit stream of pulses modulated with the the uh, modulated with the, uh, I mean, the input bits, right? So these pulses, that's the, that's, YT is actually the overall waveform that we will receive. Uh, the input bits will be modulated onto the pulse, passed through the channel, received at the receiver. XT is the convolution of GT, CT, and MT. And IN, Pulse, uh, IN bits are modulated onto the waveform. So ultimately, basic, ultimately we receive this signal, uh, summation of this, this uh, term IN XT N minus T as YT here, N plus noise will also be, uh, will also be, uh, will also occur at the uh, receiver, after the receiver filter. Then the signal is sampled after every capital T seconds. And at the, after the sampler, we will get YK, which is the sampled version of YT. And from this term, we will separate out the uh, term when N is not equal to K. That means the present symbol, right? We will, for doing the sampling, what we will do is we will put T equal to K capital T. 
so once we do k capital t then if we extract one term out of this overall term which is n equal to k so when n is equal to k this k capital t minus n capital t will become zero so that means it will be x zero right we can take it out and we will put it equal to unity so once that term is put equal to unity for n is equal to k i k will be separately put out here and all other terms n going from zero to infinity but n not equal to k will be uh, will remain here and plus vk the sampled version of the noise actually this is the isi uh, that will be introduced into the system uh, the effect of the previous bits onto the present bit the spilling over effect of the previous bits onto the present bit so that's the uh, that's the sampled signal we uh, we get here after the sampler and then the decision has to be made now the problem at hand is to remove this isi we know that the uh, if we select the raised cosine pulses we will be able to uh, get the uh, nyquist criteria for zero isi satisfied and we can make this term as zero but that is only in the case when the ch channel is constant that means the ch channel is not varying but in all practical cases channel is random channel is time varying so one if the channel is varying we cannot select the we cannot adaptively uh, uh, change the pulse every time the change is shape of the pulse every time depending on the uh, conditions of the channel uh, right because the channel actually is time varying so in that case some it will not be a, uh, it will not be practically uh, feasible that the complete isi will be re uh, removed the isi will still remain there even if we have uh, tried to fulfill the criteria of uh, try to fulfill the nyquist criteria of zero isi in that case we will have to do something before the detection right to cancel out the effect of intersymbol interference and that job is done basically by the equalizer and that process of mitigating the effects of the intersymbol interference will be called as the equalization right let's look at the details uh, in coming slides now transmitter sends discrete time symbols at a rate of 1 by t capital 1 by t symbols uh, per second and the sampled output of the mesh filter at the receiver is also a discrete time signal with samples so we have already seen that now the cascade of the transmit filter at the input channel imp uh, with the impulse response gt the channel so all these things i have already explained and this is the uh, sampled version of the signal that we get after the sampler right this is the equivalent discrete model of uh, this equation only Uh, because um, uh, for model, for all modeling purposes we will say that it is the it is a discrete time model of the channel with isi now to process this signal further and to introduce the concept of equalization uh, let me have the presenter view here it is desirable to whiten the noise sequence by further filtering the sequence yk so we will actually pass it through a whitening filter now what is whitening filter the noise and noise usually has non flat amplitude spectrum it's not flat the noise whitening module equalizes the spectrum of the signal making it similar to the white white noise spectrum right noise whitening module works similarly to the automatic filter that enhances low level spectral components and attenuates high level ones because it will bring all the frequencies to one particular uh, const almost the constant level like the white noise uh, uh, level and after that additionally de emphasis is applied after whitening 
their high frequencies are attenuated so that spectrum of the processed signal is similar to the spectrum of the speech signal. That is in the case of speech signal, we can do the de-emphasis also. Whitening and de-emphasis enhance the quality of the uh, speech signal. This module is especially useful if constant whistling is present in the recording. So since we are, we are here at present talking about a very general case, not about the speech signal. So that means our signal has to pass through a whitening filter, which will give it a white or a flat spectrum, like white noise. So this is accomplished by passing YK sequence through a noise whitening filter with response one over F, o, F of one by Z. The output sequence uh, VK can then be expressed as, because Fn is the uh, whitening sequence uh, and IK. So this is how the, uh, this is how our um, uh, output sequence will look like after passing it through the whitening filter. Where eta k is a white Gaussian noise sequence and f k is a set of tab coefficients of a digital filter f z representing the cascading of transmitting filter, channel, mesh filter, sampler and noise whitening filter. So that means we have passed through these stages, transmitting filter, channel, mesh filter, sampler, and then noise writing. From this we can, so this is the discrete time model of the channel with AWGN, which is, which is white Gaussian noise. All right. Now we will pass the, now we will talk about, after the whitening filter now, we will talk about what the equalizer is. Now we are actually discussing the uh, requirements and the uh, system that will represent the equalizer. The linear filter most often, often used as equalizer is linear transversal filter. So it's input sequence. So we will apply this sequence as input to the transversal filter, which will be an equalizer. We will see further the conditions or what are the, further, uh, what are the other conditions of um, uh, equalizer. But this is the input sequence that will be applied to this transversal filter, linear transversal filter. Its output sequence is the estimate of the, now after the uh, equalizer, actually what was transmitted, if you look at the, so this was the, uh, this IN, uh, IN uh, was the uh, input sequence, input bits that we transmitted. And we have to actually estimate the, uh, at the equalizer output, what are these bits which were actually transmitted. So we will get an estimate after the sequence is passed through the equalizer. Then we will say IK hat is the estimate of the uh, information sequence, right? And uh, which is the estimate of the whatever was transmitted as uh, ones and zeros. And we will pass it, basically equalizer is a filter with uh, uh, CJ representing the uh, response of the, CJ representing the coefficients of the filter, it will be a 2K plus one, uh, the uh, tap weight, because J will vary from minus K to K, including zero of, uh, the value of J can be zero also. So number of coefficients or number of taps in this filter will be 2K plus one. So basically it is the convolution of the VK sequence, which is input to the equalizer, and the filter coefficients, which acts as basically as a as an equalizer, and that's the after convolving with the after convolution of the input sequence and the filter coefficients, equalizer filter coefficients, we will get the estimate of the uh, in estimate of the sequences that we transmitted. Now, if I K hat is not identical to the transmitted information uh, symbol I K. Then of course uh, that will uh, so therefore the error will occur. We will have we will have to design system so that I K hat uh, will be as close as possible to the original transmitted sequence. Now if it is not, then uh, the error will occur, right? And we will have to design the equalizer uh, based on certain criteria, right? Uh, let's look at those criteria also. This is the uh, representation of the transversal filter. Uh, the, the, this is the delay line, right? These are the coefficients of the filter. 
pass through the so there will be some algorithm for tap adjustment we will see the criteria what criteria we will be, will be using uh, for the selection of the coefficient and finally the output output will be at the output uh, the finally will be the output uh, which is the equalized version of the uh, final output i mean you will get ik hat here fine now let us look at the algorithm which we will use or the criteria that we will use to optimize the coefficients of the equalizer now two main criteria the which are used for the purpose of optimizing the equalizer coefficients uh, first criteria is peak distortion criteria and the second criteria is minimum mean square error criteria okay now let us look at the peak distortion criteria the peak distortion criteria deals with the worst case intersymbol interference and which is given by the transmitted symbol uh, minus the uh, output of the output uh, the expected output of the uh, symbol value so this absolute error must be minimized so th this is known as peak distortion criteria that the minimization of this performance criteria what is the performance criteria that the error value which is the difference between ik minus ik hat this has to be minimized and this is known as peak distortion criteria now the uh, output of the whiting filter right cascade of uh, the cascade of the whiting filter and the equalizer that means fn is the response of the whiting filter whereas the uh, whereas the equalizer response is given by cn these uh, these represent the coefficient values so there is a convolution between the output of the whiting filter and the equalizer response and this value is given by qn equal to sigma j going from minus infinity to infinity c j f n minus j now we can express this term we can extract the the present the term corresponding to the present symbol which is which will be our q 0 ik we have already done this uh, exercise of extracting the present symbol value scaled value of the present symbol and the isi and similar thing we are doing here that the expected value of ik is given by the present symbol present which is the the symbol in question that we are trying to detect q0 is only the scaling value the scale that's why it is called as the scaled symbol now this value represents the isi the effect of the previous symbol and this is the noise value after going through the whiting filter so we are taking it as awgn noise now the peak value is given by the peak value of the isi is given by sigma n going from minus infinity to infinity n not equal to 0 modulus of qn so we can express this term uh, like this right now inter intersymbol interference can be eliminated by making this value this term as 0 so in that case that is qn equal to 0 for all n except n equal to 0 so that is the time domain criteria for uh, eliminating the intersymbol interference completely by the peak distortion criteria now if we take the z transform and solve this equation we will get q z equal to c z into f z right now what is c z c z is the equalizer response f z is the general response so c z and c z is uh, the reciprocal of the channel response that means whatever the channel has done uh, with the signal uh, whatever is the channel response so we if we invert that response in the equalizer so all the isi present all the distortion present in the signal will be eliminated that's what is peak peak distortion criteria intuitive but please remember that peak distortion criteria is in the absence of noise we are not considering any noise value uh in the in this expression in the expression of q z in while we are uh, putting it 
uh, you can we are, while we are putting a condition for zero ISI, we are not considering any noise term here. Any noise, no noise term has come in Q set also. And similarly, the equalizer response also, there is no noise term. Uh, that means it is in the absence of noise. The peak distortion criteria is in the absence of noise. Intuitively, it seems to be a good choice as it inverts the channel response. That's very true because it, whatever the channel response is, we just invert uh, the channel response. So we will be free of all the ISI present in the signal. This criteria leads to zero ISI. Hence, this type of equalizer is also called zero forcing equalizer because it, it makes ISI go to zero. But there is a drawback of this peak distortion criteria or zero forcing equalizer because, for example, if the signal is passing through the channel, in some bands of the channel, the uh, channel response can be very bad. That means there is a lot of attenuation in some bands. Now, if the attenuation levels are very high in certain bands, and we have selected an equalizer which just does the reverse, the inversion of the uh, channel response. So wherever the channel response is very bad, so the inversion of that thing will be complete amplification. So in that case, the noise will also be amplified. So that's what is the drawback of uh, zero forcing uh, equalizer, which says that it amplifies noise in some bands whenever, wherever the channel has high attenuation. Therefore, we can say that this technique amplifies noise. The transfer function uh, of the equalizer CZ is simply the reciprocal of FZ. So that's the same thing put in the, uh, in the diagrammatic form, which is zero, zero forcing equalizer. CZ is just FZ. And we are getting the expected value of the symbol, free of ISI, but the drawback is that it will amplify the noise also. Okay, the second criteria is mean square error criteria. Mean square error criteria says that the error value is IK minus IK hat. We know that. And what we will do, we will the we will take the expected value of the square of the error. So uh, where IK is the information symbol transmitted in the kth signaling interval, and IK hat is the estimate of that symbol at the output of the equalizer. That's very clear. That's IK is the symbol transmitted. IK hat is the uh, estimate of the symbol that we are trying to make. The performance performance index for the uh, mean square error criteria denoted by J is the expected value of the square of this error, right? So expected value of IK minus IK hat square. Now, if we uh, solve this uh, with this uh, criteria, if we try to solve the for the response of the equalizer, we will not go into the details of the solution, but I will directly put the solution here uh, and uh, important thing is that mean square criteria takes into account the noise factor and not. Whereas in the zero forcing equalizer, we it was all in the absence of noise. But here we take the noise into consideration. The equalizer filter response we get in this criteria can be derived to be CZ equal to one over XZ plus N naught. So what, what is the meaning of this? This uh, N naught is the power, spect power spectral density of noise. Uh, it is uh, when uh, N naught is very negligible, so it will be equivalent to zero forcing the equalizer only, but it takes into account the noise value also. So therefore, the noise amplification will not take place in mean square error criteria, minimum mean square error criteria, which was a drawback in the zero forcing equalizer. So that drawback is uh, overcome with this uh, criteria, minimum mean square criteria. Now let us look at the role of the equalizer in general, and then we will talk about the decision feedback equalizer. So these are the concentration points uh, at the transmitters, uh, transmitter side. So transmitted sequence, one of the uh, constellation point will be transmitted through the channel. Depending on the input symbols, one of the uh, uh, signals represented by one of the constellation points will be transmitted through the channel. The noise will be added 
the noise will be added uh, while moving through the channel and we put an equalizer here now what is the job of the equalizer when we receive the uh, the uh, this uh, diagram corresponds to uh, uh, corresponds to the received symbols now without passing through the equalizer so when we pass the signal through the equalizer the points are uh, very well placed right now here we can make a decision uh, the, about the present uh, we can make an estimate of the present symbol that to which uh, constellation point it belongs because we will uh, we will use the nearest neighborhood approach and we will uh, detect basically make a decision okay this uh, symbol was transmitted from the transmitter end this is in general you can say the description of the uh, application of the equalizer an equalizer is a digital filter that is used to mitigate the effects of intersymbol interference that is introduced by a time dispersive channel now let us look at the decision feedback uh, equalizer decision feedback equalization makes use of previous decisions in attempting to estimate the current symbol right so let us look at the block diagram of the decision feedback equalizer now input this is the vk is the input coming from the mesh filter this is a feed forward transversal filter with k1 plus 1 k1 k subscript 1 plus 1 taps right so these uh, the, the from the output of this filter will go to the symbol by symbol detector and the decision is made that what uh, symbol is transmitted now let us say that let's say the first symbol comes here right first symbol comes here it contains some information about the channel so what we will do is the information present in the received symbols will be fed back to the uh, will be fed back and this information which is fed back will help in uh, in the detection process of the where this symbol by symbol detection will take place i mean that's what is said here decision feedback equalization makes use of previous decisions in attempting to estimate the current symbol that's what is being done here so previous decision will be made here so that decision will be fed back through this uh, feedback filter and this feedback process will help in making decision of the uh, future symbols so that is the that is basically the idea of uh, decision feedback equalization any trailing intersymbol interference caused by previous symbols is reconstructed and then subtracted the dfe is inherently a nonlinear receiver however it can be analyzed using linear techniques if one assumes all previous decisions are correct the feedback filter accepts as input the decision from the previous symbol period thus the name decision feedback feed forward filter uh, will try to shape the channel so rest of the things remain the same a dfe is a non equal non linear equalizer so that's just the explanation of the decision feedback uh, equalization process that's the basic idea of a decision feedback equalizer one of the important uh, important uh, important uh, i mean the condition but one of the important advantages of the decision feedback equalizer will be that it will reduce the complexity of the feed feed forward transversal filter because uh, this feedback filter is actually helping us to make decisions based on the previous decisions and certainly the load on the feed forward transversal filter will also reduce and load in terms of the number of tabs and the complexity of this filter and overall decision feedback filter will give, will be estimating the symbols based on these two filters one is the feed forward filter and the other one is the uh, feedback filter all right now equalizer output can be expressed as ik hat uh, where j goes from minus k1 to 0 c j v k minus j j equal to 1 k to c j i k hat minus j where i k hat is the estimate of the k h information symbol c j are tab coefficients of the filter all right 
So this corresponds. This term corresponds to the feed forward filter. This term corresponds to the uh, feedback filter. All right. So that's the idea of decision feedback equalization. Now the coefficients of the feedback uh, filter of the are given in terms of the coefficient of the feed forward section by the following expression. Uh, these are the we can de we can derive the coefficients in terms of the feed forward filter also. The DFP determines the ISI from the previously detected symbol and subtracts it from the incoming symbol. The equalizer does not suffer from noise noise enhancement because it estimates the channel rather than inverting it. It it actually estimates the channel based on the uh, filter uh, characteristics and it does not invert the channel as we were doing in the case of uh, uh, zero forcing equalizer in the absence of noise and to some extent in the case of mean square error in the presence of noise. The DFE has better performance than the linear equalizer in a frequency selective fading channel. The DFE is subject to error propagation if decisions are made incorrectly. Now let's look at one more type of uh, uh, equalizer that will be fractionally spaced equalizer. But all these uh, uh, equalizers we have discussed till now, these are symbol spaced equalizer. Conventional equalizers have tap spacings that are spaced with respect to the symbol rate. Whatever is the symbol rate, the tap spacing of the filters is basically equal to the uh, symbol rate. I mean, the or uh, with respect to the symbol rate. Now, it is known that an optimum receiver corrupted by Gaussian noise would have a mesh filter sampled periodically at the symbol rate of the message, and that the mesh filter must be matched to the channel and corrupted signal prior to the okay now since the channel response is usually unknown the optimum mesh filter must be adaptively estimated a suboptimal result would uh, cause degradation in performance and sensitivity to timing error from the uh, sampling of the output now uh, let us look let us understand what is the uh, principle behind the fractionally spaced equalizer uh, fractionally spaced equalizer is based on sampling the incoming signal, signal at least as fast as the Nyquist tree. Fractionally spaced equalizers have taps that are spaced closer than the uh, conventional adaptive equalizers and with a sufficient number of taps, it is almost independent of the channel de delay distortion. And these are the, uh, if the Transmitted signal consists of pulses having a raised cosine spectrum with a roll of factor beta. Then this signal spectrum extends up to, that's the uh, width of the signal spectrum. It will be one plus beta divided by sampling time. And what about the sampling rate? The sampling rate must be at least uh, one plus beta divided by twice Ts. So that's the equation that you will have to use for the fractionally spaced equalizers. No, that's 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 actually the block diagram of the uh, fractionally spaced equalizer with a tap spacing of ml m by l uh, tb. That's the bit time. So uh, now this is the input signal, and this is s of uh, cap n hat, uh, s hat n is the output signal. Now the signal is uh, upsampled by a factor of m throughout. And ultimately, it will be downsampled by a factor of L. So that means, uh, in a way, these taps are spaced uh, fractionally with a uh, fractional ratio of M by L to the sampling rate, to the uh, sampling time. All right. Uh, now let us look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, a fractionally spaced equalizer as compared to the symbol spaced equalizer. A fractionally spaced equalizer, equalizer has the following advantages over its symbol spaced uh, counterpart. It has got no sensitivity to timing phase, superior performance in most of the cases. Symbol spaced equalizers on the other hand may offer lower complexity in some cases, but that's not always true, right? But the performance of the fractionally spaced uh, equalizer will be better as compared to the uh, symbol spaced equalizer. So uh, the important point is that 
the spacing between the tabs uh, is um, fractional, fractional achieve, fractionally achieved through the process of uh, first interpolating the signal and then uh, first interpolating the signal then passing through the channel and at the receiver you will have to downsample. So that's basically after the equalizer you will have to downsample the signal. So that's basically the uh, principle of fractionally spaced equalizer. Uh, I finish my lecture about the equalization here. Thank you. The equalizer. That is